everyone, back again, and right now I'm going to tell you my favorite books of 2014. Now these might not have necessarily been published in 2014, but they're the best ones that I read in 2014. So without further ado, here we go. The first one is a play that I read earlier this year called Red by John Logan. This was on Broadway quite a few years ago and it is about the painter Mark Rothko and his new assistant and it kind of bends history a little bit and it's fantastic and it's heartbreaking and it's beautiful and it's funny and it's one of the best plays I've read all year. So there's that. Another great play that I read this year was The Cripple of Inishman by Martin McDonough. It is a lovely Irish play and I actually saw it on Broadway this year with Daniel Radcliffe starring as Billy the Cripple. Um, it is so Irish. It's so funny and it's fantastic and it's dark. It is so dark but it, it's 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 really great and it's so worth a read if you didn't get to see it in London or on Broadway. It's fantastic. Now on to some of the best novels that I read this year. The first one is The Unchangeable Spots of Leopards by Christopher Jansma. And this book is so unique and so fantastic. It's kind of kitschy, but it works. Let me read you the inscription inside the book. If you believe that you are the author of this book, please contact Hazlitt and Gras Publishers, New York, New York, at your first convenience. And that's when you know things are going to get a little weird and a little off, but it is fantastic. I love this book. Love it. Love it. The next novel is by Maggie O'Farrell, and it's called The Vanishing Act of Esme Lennox. It took me maybe 50 pages of a very short novel to get into it, but once I did, it was so beautiful and moving and heartbreaking that I'm so glad I read it. It was one of my favorite books of the year, and I'm definitely ready to check out more of Maggie O'Farrell's work. As you know, last year the movie Kill Your Darlings with Dane DeHaan, Daniel Radcliffe, and Michael C. Hall came out, and it was fantastic and got everyone really into the beats, which is always great. But I decided to pick up this, and the hippos were boiled in their tanks, co-written by Jack Kerouac and William S. Burroughs. It is the story of the Lucian Carr David Cameron murder, told a little bit different by people who were actually involved, and it's fantastic. We Were Liars is a book that took the internet by storm this summer. Um, it was everywhere, and I think that's why I might not have liked it as much as I would have, because the I knew there was a twist coming up, and the twist was not really a twist when it got there. But otherwise, this book was fantastic. I really love E. Lockhart, and I love her. The people that she writes about are people that I want to read about. Uh, just like privileged, snotty, terrible people. That's what I'm into. So We Were Liars, although the ending kind of ruined the book for me, it was still a really good read up until then. I love Alan Cumming. You love Alan Cumming. Everybody loves Alan Cumming, and I loved his new book, Not My Father's Son, his memoir. This book was fantastic. It's kind of a mystery mushed in with memoirs and it's so good and I think everybody should give this a chance because it was a fantastic novel whether you know Alan or not. Next was the highly anticipated and not very well received Isla and the Happily Ever After by Stephanie Perkins. I think because there was such a long wait and so much anticipation over this novel a lot of people found that it did not meet their high expectations. I was one of those people but the ending of this novel definitely picked everything up and was so worth it. The next book was the highly anticipated book by Amy Poehler, Yes Please. I really liked it. A lot of people thought that it was too rushed and too all over the place, but I was a huge fan of this book. I don't... I don't know. It was much better than Bossy Pants to me. It felt a little more real, and even though I would have liked to hear more about the Upright Citizens Brigade and how she started that, and more stories from SNL, all of the like gossipy stuff that we all love, um, not much of that was in there, but I find Amy Poehler so inspirational and so lovely, and I loved her book. This was a big win for me. Another great book was I'll Give You the Sun by Jandy Nelson. This book was heartbreaking and also very inspiring and moving and all of the adjectives. It was so good and it's definitely worth all the hype. Uh, Noah and Jude. Oh man, that's all I'm going to say about this one. And last but not least, the best thing I've read all year and probably ever in my life, Gabriel, a poem by Edward Hirsch. You guys. This is a book-long elegy from Edward Hirsch to his son Gabriel, who died at 22. I can't even with this. Um, that's, like, rude to even use that. with. Like, this is the most moving thing I might have ever read, ever. And I just want to read it over and over and over again. It's beautiful, and it's haunting, and it's heartbreaking, and it's everything you would want it to be. 
and I just, oh, everyone should read this, and everyone should read it again, and then they should read it again, because it is fantastic. <sighs> okay, those were my favorite books that I read in 2014. I'm sorry that I did not make any videos about them. I may go back and make some reviews on the best of the best, and hopefully those will come at you next year. I'm hoping to get back on the vlogging train and review a bunch of books for next year because I've got all of those behind me to read and review and fall in love with. So I guess I will be seeing you guys very soon. If you guys have different favorite books that you read, please leave them in the comments below so I can check them out. Thank you very much for watching and have a great new year.